How's it going, summoners? And welcome back to another Pro Guards Wild Drift video. My name is Kirks, and for today, we have a special feature for you guys. The player redemption from Game Lord handed in an insane recording of his Kaiser gameplay, and we are about to dive into it. But before that, here's some extra info about the player himself. He has an insane competitive background coming from other mobile mobile titles, be it Vainglory or Reno Vela. He's been at the top of both of them, and now his next goal is to take on a competition in Wild Rift with his team, Game Lord. I mean, just take a look at his achievements. Now that you're done with that, let's check out the gameplay and the commentary. He's playing Kaisa Janna into Lucian Senna and is forced to leash for his jungle. Notice that he's using his first spell plus a full Kaisa passive for his jungle. That's a huge leash and an advantage given over to Camille. This will surely accelerate her clear and might grant her an early impact on the game. In the jungle role, time is everything, and if you're late to the scuttle, it might already be gone, and if you're late to a lane, they might already be dead. Efficiency and awareness are important, and everyone on the same team needs to look out for one another. It's a two ranged into two ranged matchup. If they want to win, it's important to be on the same page. So whenever Kaisa wants to go for any kind of trade, Janna has to back her up. Whenever this doesn't happen and the enemy is aware of the situation, it's going to be a lost trade. If I was Janna here, I would have not skilled my second ability. I would either have skilled my first or third ability because of us being weak on level 1. With that, we can mitigate some damage or catch somebody off guard. The lane itself is mainly determined by Janna's individual performance or the enemy misplaying. So if Janna hits her fully charged first ability into a fast Kaisa trade, it's a dub. Here we see the enemy splitting up to make a play around the scuttle crab. This is a very good opportunity to quickly chunk out the Senna and dissuade her from joining the fight. Quickly after, it's paradigm to success to play for the rotation as the team is already committing to the play. Now with the enemy being awkwardly split and out of position, it's an easy task for the ranged champions to further chunk out the enemy. Due to that, they nearly got all summoners from them and now are in a better position than before. After this play ends, both Kaisa and Janna have depleted most of their resources and want to go base to spend their gold and replenish their strength. So the only available play is to push the incoming waves as fast as possible and use the time to reset. The wave is already pushing into our dragon lane tower and we've just reset. As the enemy team doesn't have a super tank such as Alistair or Braum, it's unlikely that they're going to 2v1 dive the Kaiser who is exhaust. On top of that, they haven't recalled yet and therefore lack the resources to even think about diving. Thanks to that, the support is free to rotate towards an extended play in the middle lane and see what can happen there. In this instance, hitting the wave and pushing it for no reason is pointless. Consequently, Kaiser waits for a support to come back to collect gold and XP. In combination to that, you have to take a look at the wave state in the middle lane. Orianna is currently on her way back to the tower, but Zed is able to freely rotate around the map. Therefore, pushing instantly would result in a risk of getting ganked. To avoid that, we just have to wait until we see Zed again and Janna is with us. Important to mention is that we are not playing for traits, we are playing for scaling. We want the evolve on our first ability as fast as possible before we do anything too fancy. So unless the enemy runs it down or Janna finds some 1v9 tornadoes, we are content with just farming it up.
Before we continue with today's video, make sure to check out our Discord in the description below. A lot of community interaction, events and giveaways are waiting for you there. The enemy team is unleashing the dragon away from its pit and they let themselves get poked for no reason as a consequence. Take notice of Kha'zix's position in comparison to his teammates. Another thing to take notice of is Lucian's mana pool. He can't play without mana, it's literally not a champion. So even though we end up losing the dragon, it's still not too bad for us as Kaiser is accelerated and the enemy team lost quite a few waves. And now we finally want to spend all our gold. Quick break for a question of the day before we continue with the game. Are you familiar with the Wild Rift Esports and if so, who is your favorite team? And for all the people who don't know about Wild Rift Esports yet, just check out Game Lord. They're a crazy good team that's currently on their way of taking the number one spot in the competition. After finally escaping from the madness, we want to reset as we are in no position to accomplish anything anymore. While doing so, it's very important to stay aware of your surroundings, so in case something happens, you are able to cancel the recall and respond accordingly. With Orianna's shockwave hitting and Renekton coming from the flank, it's a done deal. The displacement of the shockwave grants Kaiser an opportunity to ult in and get fadeaway kills. For every aspiring Kaiser player, your playing field isn't limited to your locked camera vision. You want to see beyond that and use your ult to relocate yourself into a favorable position. And after killing so many enemies, taking the Herald is just a free play for even more gold. Here we see that nothing is available on the map and there's no reason to do anything apart from collecting gold from camps and waves until new opportunities arise. After losing out on their trade we see something very rare. A mid laner rotating into a sneaky brush camp in the dragon lane. As Kai'Sa lost quite a bunch of HP in that earlier trade, it's now just natural that the enemy feels more cocky about their play. They'll more likely chase after you simply due to the fact of you being low or lower HP and exactly that Orianna is going to abuse. Here we spot the enemy jungler and chunk him low. Thanks to being Kaiser though, we are able to chase him down and get a free kill right before dragon spawns. Ah, 
However, the game turns into madness at that very point in time. The enemy team is disjointed and trying to force a lot of plays in sequence. However, they cannot just do this in the way they want and therefore we are able to punish most of their mistakes. As an AD carry, we hate those situations as we are very vulnerable to most of their champions. We need to assess the situation as best as possible and play from there. Otherwise, we have to take a step back and wait for a chance to strike, which might never come. And even though we lost another drag, it's not a major game changer. It's just a normal dragon and it won't lose you the game by default. Never forget that. Another thing that is grossly overlooked is the fact that an AD carry needs a lot of gold to make sure he's able to carry. So when you're in the weird positions where there's not much to do, just catch as many waves as possible and collect some jungle camps as well. You need the gold to carry, trust me. Here we see something very important, giving your AD carry red buff. It makes a huge difference in terms of damage and kite potential. So as the game goes on, put the red buff on the strongest member, it's literally your best bet when it comes to buff efficiency and carrying the game. Now the game enters this weird state in which a lot of players don't know what to do. As Baron is simulating out on a menu now, there's only reactive plays happening. Lucian and Senna push a lane and try to take a tower, and we simply try to deny them the free gold as we are not in a position to trade Nasha for their overcommitment on the dragon lane. But here the enemy is way too greedy with their current strength. They cannot dream of winning a straight up fight in a 2v2 scenario anymore, and as long as no variable joins the fight in an unforeseen way, it's still an easy dub. Janna can reliably remove Kha'Zix from the equation if he happens to join in, and as long as Kai'Sa gets to DPS, there's no way we can lose. Now with Kha'Zix dead, it's a free Baron for us, and if the enemy chooses to contest, there's nothing but death waiting for them. With red buff and dragon spawning, we want to quickly pick up the buff and then transition into the dragon lane to get the push going so we can contest the dragon. At this point, Kaiser is so strong that the enemy team cannot dream of winning a fight unless Kaiser is picked off guard before the fight begins. Basically, what nearly happened to Janna when she face checked Crybrush. But sometimes you just gotta do it and go for that highlight play, forgetting that your Zonius and Flash are on cooldown. It's like the typical AD carry oopsie.
the enemy team cannot dream of defending against our team. If we death ball down mid, we just win for free. While we are live stealing off creeps to sustain ourselves, we see Lucian split up for god knows what reason. This plus Timo dead, so we cannot be blinded, allows us to chase after him and commit hard for the kill. We have everything ready so there is no way we can die. This time at least. The only issue with this play is the fact that we use all our defensive layers for a kill that isn't guaranteed to grant us Nasher. However, we are allowed to gain vision control and steal away the enemy red buff afterwards and luckily the enemy is running it down a bit while our team is responding magnificently. This is allowing us to take down Asher and prepare for the last push. As our team is already trying to end, we can swap out our boots and chant for teleport to rejoin them in their attempt of ending the game. A super high variance play in which we are kind of forced to participate in, as our team already committed really hard. Ideally though, we just wait for the next wave to spawn and run it down mid as the enemy cannot clear waves versus us. The moment they step forward, they'll just be all in and killed allowing us to just end the game in an instant. With that, we're at the end of today's video. I hope you liked the format and enjoyed the gameplay with commentary and if so, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to never miss one of these again. Also, don't forget to check out Redemptions and Gamelord socials in the description below. Even better for you guys, this Kaisa also streams on Twitch. You cannot afford to miss out on that one if you're looking for quality gameplay. So there's only one thing left to say. See you next time.